If you've been following AI developments, here's an interesting experiment you need to see. I decided to test how large language models can actually play chess by putting two of the most powerful LLMs, GPT and Claude, head to head, then having them face off against the one and only Stockfish. The results? Well, they're interesting. Let's break down what we're looking at. The interface has three components, a standard chessboard in the center, a move log on the right tracking every play, and most importantly, a reasoning window right here showing exactly how these AI models think through each and every move. Now, here's what you need to know about these models. GPT and Claude are language models. This means that they're built for processing text and not playing chess. While they've seen millions of chess games in their training, they're fundamentally different from specialized chess engines like Stockfish. This distinction becomes really important as we watch them play. Okay, I'm gonna keep this very short, but you need to see what's going on behind the scenes. Let's look closer. The system sends each model the following. The current board state, a list of legal moves, previous game history, information about pieces. And here's something that's interesting. When I first tested this with a simple prompt without providing this information, the model started inventing moves that were impossible. One even tried to checkmate the other using a queen that didn't exist on the board. Now that's awesome if we're playing imaginary chess, but we're not doing that in this video. So this led me to pass more data to the models, so I keep them playing by the rules. Now there are a couple of functions that I'm going to focus on, and the first one being this get move post, which is going to be called anytime we need one of the models to suggest its best next move. And again, to help the model decide, I'm providing it with the following information. A history of the last move made by both players. That's the last moves text variable. Then I'm adding a list of attack pieces for each player. And then I'm building the system prompt. And I'm saying, you are the greatest chess master in the world with deep strategic knowledge, blah, blah, blah. Then, if you can see at the end, I'm saying provide a step-by-step -step reasoning process followed by the final move. And that's important because this is a chain of thought prompt, which basically asks the model to reason before it makes a suggestion perfect for complex situations and should theoretically improve a model's output. Now, later in the video, we're going to see the reasoning for some of these moves. It's definitely something interesting to see. Okay. Next, we're building the prompt itself and we're passing the board state in fan format. And then we're doing, we're passing the PGN notation. And this is the sequence of moves in this game. Then we're passing the player color, a list of legal moves. And without this, we're just gonna go back to imaginary chess, like I said before. So we definitely need this. And finally, I'm adding this list of attack pieces and then we're saying never move into a square that is unprotected or threatened, blah, blah, blah. Evaluate the board carefully. Uh, you know, all these instructions. So next you can see that we have this max attempts variable. So we're going to go ahead and try a maximum of four times to get a legal move out of the models. And first we check if we're getting a request to get a next move from any of the Claude uh, models. So we're checking for Claude and we're calling the Claude API. We're passing the prompt and the system message. And then I'm just storing the response that we get from the model in this response text here. Next, we're doing the same thing with OpenAI. So if it's not Claude, it's gonna be OpenAI. We're passing as well the system message, the prompt, and we're also storing the response in this response text variable. Now, if we want Stockfish to play the next move, we're gonna be using a separate endpoint that I'm gonna show you in a bit. Okay, next we have suggested move, which is the move that is extracted from this response text. Just because we have this reasoning that's going to come back from the LLM, so the response is going to be like uh, looking at the chessboard, I decided that this and that. And then at the end, we're going to have the move itself. And this function will extract that move and only this move. And then we're going to see if this move is part of the legal moves. And if it is, we're just going to return the move. And we're also going to send the reasoning so we can display it in our front end. 
Okay, now if the move fails and we're not breaking the for loop, we're just gonna go change the prompt and we're gonna say the move, suggested move is not valid. So this is the list of the legal moves that you can make. Go ahead and create a new one. And that's our updated prompt. If everything fails, I'm just throwing an exception. So for Stockfish, it's a simpler process and I'm just sending the Fen representation of the board and Stockfish or the Stockfish engine is generating the next best move. It doesn't need a system prompt. It doesn't need a prompt or all this information like the large language models because this is a chess engine. So it can just generate very good moves by seeing the fin string. So we're doing that. And then once we have the move, we send it back as a response from this endpoint. Now we can move to the games. And first we're gonna start with game one, Anthropic's finest, Claude 3.5 Sonnet versus GPT 3.5 Turbo. Grab your popcorn and let's hit start. Okay, things are looking good so far. GPT 3.5 or black thinks that the best move is knight to c6 because it's now attacking the pawn on e5, but it just gave up its knight on f6, which now white can take. Right? No? Okay, so Claude doesn't want to take it. It's fine. Um, uh, I know I know LLMs aren't made, like I said, for chess, but it's just really nice to watch um, both of them giving away pieces. All right, I'm just going to fast forward just because there's nothing to learn here. So I'll save you some time. Okay. Uh, trying to checkmate with just the queen by following the king. Uh, so it might not be clear because the clip is on fast forward, but white is just throwing pieces next to black's king for some reason. And the funny thing is, Black sometimes takes the pieces, and some other times he's like, yeah, it's okay, I'll pass, and just moves away. Um, okay, kings are just dancing or something. Yeah, this looks like a draw. Okay, we have a draw. Game two, things are getting serious. Let's bring in the ultimate GPT-4.0 to take on Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And boom, let's go. Okay, I'm pretty sure this will be better or uh, I really want it to be better. Okay, totally gave up the night from the start. Yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, these guys are amazing at losing pieces. Hmm. Just giving up stuff. Whatever, it's just a knight. Again. Giving up a rook. I tried to get Claude Opus to play too, but each move took like 20 seconds and my wallet started crying. It was basically suggesting kind of the same moves as Sonnet anyways, just slower and more expensive. So I'll save you the time and I'll save myself the money and skip this so we can get to the good stuff. Ah, interesting. We have a checkmate, Claude won, yay. Now for the main event. Can either of these AIs handle Stockfish? Let's find out. First, we're gonna do Sonnet 3.5 versus Stockfish. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's no way Claude stands a chance against Stockfish, to be honest. Who knows? Let's just see how this game goes. Okay. Oh, 
<laughs> okay, what? Claude is just like, here, take my queen. I don't need it. Whoa, just as expected, easy win for Stockfish. Now let's do GPT-40 versus Stockfish. Yeah, I think GPT-40 is going to take longer to beat, just because it's slower than Claude at suggesting moves. But who knows? We may witness a miracle today. Still giving away pieces. Yeah, there's no way GPT-40 could win this, ever. Why? Why did you move your rook to e7? <laughs> I don't want to know, but you can pause the video and read the reasoning if you want to. Anyway, just as expected, total destruction. Look, I tried lots of different ways to get these AIs to play better chess. I played around with different prompts and instructions. And while I'm sure we could make them better with more training and better prompts, right now they're pretty bad at chess. Tell me, do you have any tips on improving their gameplay? And what are your thoughts about this simple experiment? I'd love to know in the comments. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.